Welcome everybody. My name is Carl Olson. I'm the director of the Library Foundation. I have a somewhat last minute change uh, to let you know about. Our team at a and &E Architects and MSR Design is not quite ready to go over the new library's overall design details. Um, they will be soon, but we were perhaps overly optimistic about the timeline we had given them. Um, so please stay tuned. We will publicize their next event and schedule it for when their work is complete and ready to truly be unveiled. Um, if you were here just to see architects in action, um, you're welcome to leave. But I also encourage you to stay because we have um, other things that we can talk about as well. The library project is so big um, and exciting. There are many different facets of this. Um, I do want to assure you the building project is on track. As we committed from the beginning, it is still slated to open in early 2020, perhaps late 2019. We're grateful for the community's trust um, in the project and the process as evidenced by last November's vote on the library bond. And I'm happy to announce that as of this month, the All Under One Roof capital campaign has raised 3.6 of a $5 million goal in private and major gifts. So we are on track and expect to stay on track. Tonight instead, we will learn about what I call the design within the design, the function behind the form. The great Chicago school architect Lewis Sullivan coined the phrase, form follows function. In fact, I think this is a great opportunity to actually quote him on this. He wrote, whether it be the eagle in his flight or the open apple blossom, the toiling workhorse, the branching oak, the winding stream at its base, form ever follows function. A little purpley there, but it was, I think, the very early 20th century. In other words, what he was saying, all of these things may look intricate and awesome and well-designed, but they only look that way because each object in its own way serves a functional purpose. The design of Missoula's new public library, a 21st century library, will be beautiful, but it's not just an excuse to play with cranes and push dirt around. Rather, the design is a direct response to the key functions your public library fulfills in your community. For example, as a provider of information in all formats and to all people. As a hub of lifelong learning from infant story times to active aging programs. And this week was active aging week at the library. We had some cool stuff for that. And as Missoula's town square, where you and your neighbors can meet, share stories, and exchange ideas. Tonight we are focusing on engagement. We've segmented the presentation in three major ways people engage with the public library and how these forms of engagement will be improved in the new building. They are the way library users engage with library staff, the way library users engage with the collection, and the way libraries engage in community. That is the library's role as a public gathering and meeting space. Walking us through these topics will be Hanora Bray, the director of the Missoula, Missoula Public Library, immediately to my right, we'll just go down the row here, Elizabeth Jonkel, the assistant director of the library, and Rita Henkel, chairperson of the Library Board of Trustees. So thank you ladies for sharing your ideas and plans with us. We'll kind of juggle these around. And after they each do their segment, then we'll have a chance to engage and do Q&A. And um, 
uh, interact with you all as well. Hanor, you're next. So I'm very excited, like everybody else is, about what the library will actually look like. You know, it's been a long time coming, and we finally will get to see that um, happen shortly, I think. But the most exciting thing to me, and has been for years, is how staff and users will engage in a different way. And um, some of the things that I think are really exciting is now you come to the library and you see a lot of public desks, the accounts desk, the reference desk, the kids desk, the desk in Web Alley, and there is a, an attendant there to help <coughs> you with whatever your issues are or whatever you want to find. Um, in the new library, it won't be like that. The new library will be a lot of, of space that you'll interact with the staff as they're in that space. They won't be sitting at desks. There'll be a concierge desk on every floor. So when you enter the floor, if you're not sure where you're going or you want some help um, finding something or you'd like to visit with someone specifically, then that person will help you in find your way around to what you're looking for. Um, so when you come into the new library, the um, space is a very open space with new materials and um, the AV collection. The, what used to be the accounts desk will no longer be there, but there'll be little places that staff can take you to help you with your accounts. I, that's one question everybody has, where will we settle our accounts? Well, you'll be able to go into a little private space, kind of a little nook, where you can talk about your account, or if you need to set up a payment plan, you can set up a payment plan there, or talk about the book that the dog ate and, and what you're going to do with that book, instead of having to do it out in front of everybody. Um, it's just a lot more humane to have a space where people can talk individually and um, feel more secure than out in public. Um, what allows us to be able to do this differently is we'll be um, putting in an automatic check-in system. So you'll come through the door, you'll put your books on a conveyor that will check in your books and only one person will be back there trying to figure all that out and the rest of the staff will be freed up to be out in the library talking to the public about um, what, what the public wants to know about. Um, so we're really excited to have that one-on-one -on -one with the users and be able to provide that kind of service. Um, there'll be um, a lot of staff moving about like in a department store Elizabeth and I talk all the time about that's about the best way to be able to explain to people what, what this new model looks like. Sometimes when you come in now you see a staff person roving through the, the stacks, but because we're tied to desks and tied to check-in, um, it doesn't allow us to be out in the library actually helping people with what they want to, to find. So. Um, that's one thing, is you'll see more staff roving about. Um, on the kids' floor, there'll be staff available to help in all of the areas of the exhibits and the books and other kind of resources that will be on that floor. Um, so they also will no longer be attached to a desk, but they'll also be Spectrum and um, the Children's Museum staff on that floor helping people. So. The exhibits that will be there, some of them will be self-explanatory, some of them will have staff with the exhibit to help, um, the, help the users find out what the exhibit's about and um, how it relates to science and nature and whatever. Also, um, we'll no longer have a, a service desk on the reference floor. The reference floor, you'll be able to book a librarian. So. Um, one of our reference librarians sitting here in the red jacket, if you want to talk to Marge about something that she started helping you with, you'll be able to book 
a half hour time with her and she can get you started on a research project, help you find more materials, come back and, and check up on you and then help you again later. So it will allow people who use the Montana room right now to have a lot more um, attention from staff because they don't have to answer the phone at the desk all the time. Um, they also, this concierge person, when you come to the floor if you don't want to book a librarian and you just need some help answering a question, they'll help get you to the right person to be able to do that. But the reference staff also will be working in the collection and um, through the stacks of the buildings so that when you're looking for material on a subject and you're not quite sure what book would be the best or what materials are the best, they'll be out on the floor so that they can help you find those things. Um, there'll be private space for us to do notary and passports in. If you come to get a passport now, you get to come to my office and or if there's a meeting in my office, you get sent to the Montana room. So um, we feel like passports and notaries are things that people need to have some privacy to do those. Um, so we'll have a special room that that's all it's for is notaries and passports. And it will be busy most of the day because we do a ton of passports every week. So um, it, it'll be nice to have that extra private space for that. Um, I think that what we're most excited about is uh, that we now will have the opportunity to work more with the users and have more user contact than what we get right now. Um, if we get a lineup of four people at the reference desk, it's pretty hard to spend a half hour with somebody um, in doing research. But because we'll be able to repurpose other staff, to answer phones and do that type of thing. Um, it will free up staff to spend more time with the patrons. And that's what the library is about, is the users, not about us. So we're really excited that we're going to get to have that opportunity. Anybody have any questions? OK, Elizabeth. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how the new library gives us the opportunity to bring collections to life. So uh, most people, when they think of a library, still think about the print collection. So we're not forgetting that as being really an important element. But uh, for a print collection, we're looking to invest in new ways of displaying and shelving materials. So we're planning on stacks that are designed to be more user friendly, uh, stacks that encourage patron engagement with the collection better lighting, uh, better sizing, better, so you have better access. We're planning on better seating and custom spaces to access while in the building for in-house use of the collections. And as Anor mentioned, our circulation processes for the print materials will be more streamlined and easier to use so that the check-in and check-out of materials will be friendlier and more fun. And I, by fun, I think I literally, the, I think little children are going to really enjoy uh, the whole checkout process what, and check-in process when we, when we are in this new building. But aside from just the print, we also plan on having new ways of engagement with the library's collection and resources. So specifically, um, we're hope, we are planning to have a demonstration kitchen. So. This would be located in conjunction with our food-related materials and cookbooks. So in other words, uh, we would co-locate anything related to recipes and cooking and interest in cooking. So it would be close to the demonstration kitchen, which would be a space for learning in both the library and then at home with the materials that would be available for checkout. So cookbooks and possibly other new collections, such as baking pans. I know we have uh, one donor in the wings who has an enormous collection of cookie cutters, <laughs> which <laughs> she's hoping the library might be the recipient of. And so things like that would be co-located with the kitchen. So you could come in and you know, possibly uh, take advantage of this groovy new collection of cookie cutters. 
Um, and this new space then also presents us with exciting opportunities for interactive programming and interactive learning. A second space where, uh, for new, in, new in types, a new form of engagement is uh, yes. a workspace, which would be a combination business hub, job resource, and shared work area that would bring technology, space, and reference materials all together in one consolidated location. So the focus here would be on self-service resources like faxing, document and photo scanning, Xeroxing, and printing. You can conceive of it as kind of like a one-stop spot, one -stop spot for all your business needs that would also provide collaborative spaces that uh, would be available in the form of sharing tables and um, dedicated meeting rooms so that you could have this space for if you were an uh, individual with you know, either a self-starter uh, self or a small business, you would have this nice dedicated workspace with all of the resources at your disposal to um, uh, get personal work done or collaborative work done. And of course, we're also going to have an expanded maker space, which we're hoping, which we will be combining with a new art center. So this space will be staffed by Missoula Public Library staff as well as Spectrum staff. Uh, the maker space is a learning space for soft and hard skill development that emphasizes STEAM over STEM. And what I mean by that is you always hear of science, technology, was it engineering? engineering. engineering. But you add that A and you have the arts in there as well. So we're uh, going to have an artist space that will be reservable for experiential learning with a skilled instructor. There will be a small reference collection that will be present with materials for purchase to create with 3D printers, et cetera. So this is another exciting programming space where people can learn all sorts of new skills in a fun, dynamic way. So the idea of each of these new offerings is that while well, old school libraries, uh, old school traditional libraries provided books on all of these topics, in a new 21st century library, you're given a, sp a people, a place, and the tools to actually do these things and to learn in an interactive way. So in addition, uh, there will be other collection-oriented areas within the library which are not yet determined, so I can't expound at a granular level what this might look like, but be aware that we're focused on you know, ease of navigation and a user-friendly approach towards the access to information. Okay, um, I'm going to be talking about the community spaces or the meeting rooms, and um, I think we've all heard in the meetings that we've had prior to this about what is needed in the library. A lot of it's been focused on we need more meeting space in Missoula. So with that being heard, we've decided we're going to have those on every floor. And even as you enter the library, there's going to be a cafe where you can meet um, and have a coffee even. On each floor, there will be several rooms that will have room for two to six people to meet. And those are private rooms, and that doesn't even begin to talk about the areas where you can rearrange the chairs and you can have your book club meeting or you can get together with your crocheting friends and you can crochet together or whatever it is that you need to meet about. There should be some private and some more open spaces where this can take place. Um, your cooking club could meet up by the kitchen area. Um, that would be an exciting place, I think, to have a meeting. Um, there be on the top floor then is going to be the main meeting room which would be a, it's going to be a large room 300 people it's going to be divisible by three so you can pull the or come down or however we're going to do it um, divide the room into thirds or if you only want 200 just pull one wall over there will be a pre-function space out front for people to gather and talk before the meeting during the meeting there will be a smaller meeting room up there. There's also a catering kitchen up there if you would like to have food catered up for a lunch um, to when the meeting breaks at noon that will be available and um, there'll be technology in 
access to everything, web access, in all the meeting rooms so that it will be up to date and all your needs will be taken care of to meet in the library. So we're really looking forward to being able to provide more spaces for people to meet and get together, whether it's a small group or a large group. This is really going to be an exciting meeting opportunity for everybody. And I think that's about it for the meeting spaces. Any questions? Yes. Um, well, currently there are meeting spaces on the first floor of this library. Are there going to be meeting spaces on the first floor of the new library? Yes, there will be. There won't be a large area on the first floor. The largest area will be on the fourth floor. But they'll be small enough? Yes, yes. There'll be meeting spaces available on all floors. And the meeting spaces will be on the interior of the building so that the exterior of the building um, people can sit and read by the natural light. The, the meeting spaces also will be glassed in rooms. They won't be solid rooms because it's much easier for staff to be able to maintain um, the needs of people if it's very visible for everyone. And I think Carl's showing some pictures of meeting rooms when you can see up here that the furniture and you know this isn't exactly what we're going to have because we don't know yet but it's furniture that's easily movable so that it can be moved into whatever size group you might need. Yes. Uh, you have all of these meeting rooms and these various experiences <coughs> that people can participate in. Um, have you thought about what's going to be the mix between what's free and what is charged for? Just out of curiosity. So everything's free at the public library mm -hmm. except for printing, 3D printing in the um, makerspace, and any kind of programs that we have that um, in the makerspace that use a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of materials that we wouldn't normally have. So people would have to purchase those materials. But um, as far as the other entities go, um, Spectrum, their exhibits are free of charge. Um, now you pay for those at if you go to Spectrum. Um, so they're getting free space in order for them to be able to not charge the public to use their services. And MCAT is free, it's always been free. And then um, the Children's Museum, the only thing that will be charged for are um, classes that the families first do that they, because they pay um, psychologists and, and counselors to do those classes, so they'll have to charge for those specific classes, but otherwise all of the materials that they provide are free um, and their exhibits are free. Would uh, any of the rooms be available for rent for, say, an event somebody has a, a, a small you know, professional convention or somebody wants to do a wedding mm -hmm. uh, reception or whatever? Well, we're still talking about that because public library users come first. So those are things that would have to take place after hours and um, the, the meeting spaces will be available after hours. There'll be a key to entry. You get in the elevator and you go straight to the meeting space and whoever checks those rooms out is responsible for those rooms. So if you choose to have a meeting before work in the morning and you check that room out, then you need to leave that room just as it was before you um, used it or you'll, you're the one that is responsible then for repair or um, damage of anything. We don't know yet about weddings and that type of thing. We, we're um, looking at other people, other libraries policies to see how it works there and, um, and that's a big decision the board will have to make down the road. I think the key part of that, just to touch on what Honor did say, is that when the library 
is open for its public hours, people cannot rent any space for private use, that the library is fully open to everyone during those public hours. And that's, that's true now. Anyone can come into this meeting and anyone can leave. Um, if someone came and in our library today and, and wanted to have a yoga class here, they could do that. Anyone can come and, and participate in the yoga class. Um, or observe. So that, the, that policy, I think, is a strong library policy that will continue. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if anybody you know wants to use this room for a birthday party during the open hours, they can use the room for a birthday party as long as they know all public is invited in. <laughs> <laughs> so. Guess how many birthday parties are held? <laughs> 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 it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's truly a public space. Will, will the hours be the same? We, we don't know for sure. We might try um, opening a little earlier and closing at 8 o'clock at night instead of 9. We're, we're just not sure yet. Those kinds of decisions are still being talked about. Oh, and I have one more question, sorry. Mm, that's um, all right. I'm, I asked a question at the last meeting about the stairs. And I didn't quite comprehend what he said. So I, I asked the question about the number of steps mm -hmm. a person would have to take between the first and second floor and the second and third and the third and the fourth. Yeah. And I didn't quite understand what he said. Okay. So I'm not sure what the numbers are. I do know that the distance between floor to ceiling is 18 feet. So depending on how deep the stairs are, it will depend on what, what the amount of stairs are. There also are, and I, I know that you heard this before, but there's two elevators, two public elevators in the building. So um, there's, there's opportunity if you're nervous to get in an elevator with a bunch of people, there's opportunity for you not to have to ride a crowded elevator. So. Um, that opportunity is there. There's two public elevators, one um, large elevator for the staff that exhibits can go up and down on. So there's um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of options. Well, um, the stairs will they be built with backing, or will they be more like the stairs in the Providence Center where? You walk in and then you can see you're on the third floor and you can see down to the parking garage. We are not to the point in design yet that we know that. We're only 30% into design, so we're not sure exactly what the staircase will look like. Mm hmm. Elizabeth, did you have a question? Um, I was just quick calculation knowing that typically. Uh, rides of the stairs seven inches. They might be slightly different, but it would be approximately 30 steps. Between each floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be like a landing. Mm -hmm. I think you there would have to 15. be a landing at some point in there, yeah. You go up 15 and there's a landing. Yeah. You go up another. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elizabeth is a designer. That's how she knows that. <laughs> Any other questions? questions or thoughts to share? Oh, um, sorry. No. The the web alley, now that is that's used a lot now. But um, my understanding was there's going to be nothing that resembles web web alley. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, We've learned from Web Alley that it was a very poor design, but it's what we had to work with. It's the space, it's the only space we had in the library to be able to convert into a, a computer center. And from research from libraries all over the United States, we've found that it's much better to have people mixed up wherever they want to sit. So we will be, we'll have two vending machines, one on first floor, one on third floor, that vend laptop computers. 
and you'll be able to take your laptop to any space in the library and sit and use it. So if you feel comfortable, you know, I have a friend who does not want to sit anywhere where her back's not against the wall. She's really uncomfortable. So she isn't going to want to sit in Web Alley because people can walk up behind her and that makes her very nervous. So that person would go find a cozy little space in the library where they can put their back against the wall and use a computer. So there'll be lots of space for people to actually choose where they want to sit and um, where they feel comfortable. And there'll be like tables. Yes. Basically. And the issues that we have in Web Alley are when two feisty people sit next to each other <laughs> and then um, somebody or both are asked to leave because their behavior is not acceptable to the library. So by not forcing people to sit in that kind of proximity, we don't think we'll have those same issues. I think it also, um, it, also it, it speaks to how people actually access information and learn. So the mobility and the flexibility, can, they can take the laptop and the computer, for example, into the stacks um, where there's seating, and if they are focusing on doing research for a paper for school, they can be right there where those materials are in a nice little setup with their laptop and access both. And um, that's, I think, the great key to this entire design is mobility and flexibility in a way that just could not have been imagined in 1973, 74, when this building was designed. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You can. Well, and then the only thing, I'm, so the printers are going to be in each floor, or uh, just one, well, seven on each mm -hmm. floor. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see these vending machines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are so cool. <laughs> you, they, they have the laptop in. They're plugged in. You unplug it, take it out. When you come back and show your library card again, it opens the same door. You put your laptop back in and plug it in. And until you plug it in, it does not check it back in. So you plug it in, close the door, and then it checks the laptop back in. Shucks, I was hoping for one of those corkscrew things <laughs> where it drops down. <laughs> yeah, well, my chips got stuck in one of those the other day, so I don't like them very well. <laughs> and could you address um, how visitors who don't have library cards are going to be able to use computers? Yes. Um, we'll, we'll have a very similar system where they'll be able to get a guest pass and be able to um, access the computers from a guest pass. Anything else? Well, um, if that's, did anyone else have any, then we'll go ahead and wrap this evening up. I, also, I do want to thank MCAT for filming this for posterity and all four programs now, which you can find there. And each program we had on Wednesday this month addressed a different um, aspect of what we call new ways to library. So they're available on the internet through MCAT um, to be watched over and over again to your heart's delight. So <laughs> thank you, MCAT. And thank you all for being here and contributing and participating. Um, we appreciate it and hope you have a good evening. Thanks. Thanks.